Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Zanny Cakes, and in this video we're going to look at the new map system for Project Diablo 2. So if you get a map, it will look like this. It can either be white, blue, or yellow. And then if you run over to Anya, she has things that you can buy to modify these maps with. There, go to trade, miscellaneous, and she has these five things. So this, this one right here, the Zacharum Orb, will imbue a white map. So you need a white map. And if you have a loot filter, a lot of the loot filters, the Chrysard's one, which is what I'm using, will tell you what you need to go with this. Otherwise, you can find it on the Project Diablo 2 wiki. But for the Zacharum Orb, to turn a white map into a yellow map, you need the orb, a jewel, any rune that is Thule or higher, and then a white map. You simply put them in your cube and transmute. So then it turns into a yellow map. The second thing that we have is the angelic orb. It will turn a blue map into a yellow map. So for this one, you need the angelic orb, a perfect skull, a rune that is Thule rune or higher, and then a blue map. And that turns it into a yellow map. And then the Herodrim orb will re-roll the stats on a yellow map. So we have, those are our stats, faster hit recovery, or minor, Reduced faster hit recovery, monsters are faster, they do more poison damage, have absorbed, say we don't like that, then we can re-roll it. So now they have, we have less faster hit recovery, they do fire damage, we have less chance to block, we have less defense, the map contains ghosts, and the map contains reanimated horde. On the arcane orb, if you're using filter, it says that you need the arcane orb, a jewel, and any rune. So it'll take you. The arcane orb, a jewel, any rune, and then a white map. And it doesn't do anything. The rune itself is act or the recipe itself is actually just the arcane orb, a jewel, and a map. And that will turn it into a blue map. So once we have your maps, you can re-roll them to your heart's content as long as you have the gold and materials for it. And then looking at the map mods themselves, once you get to the yellow maps, they will have experience, density, and then bonus to your magic and gold find. And you can also get maps that have bonus to monster rarity, which will increase the amount of rare and unique packs that are on the maps themselves. And it is possible to use the world stone shards to corrupt your maps. They can change the mods. You can get bonuses. Like on this one, I got bonus to gold find. This one, I didn't get anything. It just changed the mods on it. Same with this one, it just changed the mods. And then on this one here, you can see it has players have increased attack speed and faster cast rate, so it is possible to get beneficial mods on slamming maps. So now that we got all the crafting part out of the way, how to reroll maps, how to make them yellow, and all that fun stuff, let's go ahead and take a look at the Ruins of Vizjun. So the Ruins of Vizjun map is your tier 1 map. It's the most commonly dropped one, and it has an area level of 86, which is one level higher than any of the normal Diablo 2 content. And it has a tile set that is similar to the Kuros Bazaar, Upper Kuros, Lower Kuros, that's kind of more forest with ruins and buildings along the way. 
There can spawn quite a few different kinds of monsters. The ones that I find particularly annoying are the succubi as well as the hierophants. The Hierophants have Blizzard and Lightning that do quite a bit of damage even if you have maxed resistances. And then they also can heal other things, they teleport away and try and run away. The Succubi do a lot of damage and then they will keep you almost continuously amplified damage. So they are pretty annoying as well. Other than that, the Flare Dart Shooter guys, they do quite a bit of poison damage. The spiders can do quite a bit of poison damage. The lancers are very fast and do quite a bit of damage. And overall, there's a lot of hard hitting things, and I find it particularly difficult on a caster. One thing I will note is that there has, are not any normally physical immune spawns that I've ran into yet. I've ran quite a few of them, and have not seen any physical immunes other than the random rare mobs that get stone skin, they can become a physical immune. However, just the normal mobs themselves do not have physical immunities. That being said, you can get the mod that says map contains ghosts, and those will be physical immune. However, they do not normally spawn in the map itself. As far as the map boss goes, the map bosses are definitely no joke, guys. They are pretty tough. And this one is the cartographer. He looks like Radiment. He casts about seven of the little black holy bolt things at a time. He resurrects the skeletons around him. He's got both skeletal warriors and archers. And then he does battle orders and shout and buffs them up ridiculously high. They're very tanky, relatively hard to kill. You cannot leech off of them. And when they are alive, when he does his battle orders, they get super huge buff for a few seconds. So your best bet is to run away and let that little damage buff fall off and then go back to trying to kill them. Once all of his adds are dead, then you can, he's very easy to kill. It's just a matter of killing all of the adds before you end up dying. Because he will battle orders and shout quite often. And as soon as you see him starting to cast those, you want to just get away. And that way you can stay alive, keep your mercenary alive. If you have teleport, it's, I would highly recommend using teleport to get away. Just get off of the screen and then wait a few seconds and go back in and try to kill more of the ads. I hope this gives you guys a better idea on the Project Diablo 2 map system and how it works. I will be doing other videos on the Tier 2 and Tier 3 maps to show you guys what those ones look like as well as how the boss fights work in those. So stay tuned for those. And as always, good luck, have fun, and I hope to see you out there.